Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'm very excited to show you what's new in Oxygen 3.7 Alpha 1. Oxygen 3.7 Alpha 1 is a major release that includes two new features. The first is CSS Grid, which I'll show you right now. So here we have a bit of a design that I've set up. We've got one div within a section here, and that div has some elements within it. And we want to do a grid card type of layout here. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this div a bunch of times. Let's do it that many times. How many do we have there? Okay, so that's perfect to start with. Uh, and then we want to lay these out in a grid using CSS Grid. Well, you probably spied the new grid layout option over in the Properties pane. So we're going to click that on the section that contains all these divs. And you can see our layout changes. So by default, we don't have a column count set. So we're going to go ahead and decide how many columns we want for this layout by dragging this slider here. One column means our grid children are going to be full width. Two means we have two columns, etc. So let's do a three column layout here. And then uh, we can also adjust the minimum width and maximum width of the grid columns. Uh, but for this layout, we do not need to do that. We can adjust the grid uh, column gap. So let's set it to 16 pixels instead of 20. We'll set the row gap to 16 pixels instead of 20. The row behavior, um, auto is gonna be your safest bet for most layouts, but if you really know what you're doing with grid, you can go with explicit and define the row count, the min height and max height of the rows. But we're gonna leave it at auto for this. Match height of tallest child just means the rows when row behavior is set to auto will be at least as tall as the tallest grid child. So for most cases, that's a safe bet to leave on, which is why it's set by default. Now, the really cool part about this integration is we've made it super simple to alter the way grid children take up space within the grid. So over here, you'll see this grid children section. And let's assume we want our first item to take up a bit more space than the others. So we could click this indicator here that represents the first grid child, and we can change its column span, and we can change its row span. Okay, so that means that we can control the way the grid children are laid out. We can go up here and just change this row span to two as well. And now we have this really kind of nice grid layout. And of course, this is super flexible. You can create some pretty incredible layouts with CSS grid uh, integrated in this way. And one of the reasons we decided to add the controls to the grid container rather than making you tweak it on each individual child element is because we wanted to add CSS grid controls to repeaters and easy posts. And on those, you can't select each individual child element. So let me show you what it looks like to use grid with an easy posts element. So I'm going to get rid of these grid children here. Get rid of that one. And notice that as we get rid of a grid child, the next one in line takes on that row span and column span that we set. That's because we're using nth child selectors to style these elements, which again was kind of uh, in preparation for using CSS grid with uh, elements where the content is dynamically generated. So let's switch this back to a vertical flex box layout. And then let's add an easy post element. Drop that right in. And you can go in and choose grid layout here and tweak the grid layout of the easy post element just like you can on a container. But we also have some presets and I'm going to use those to show you really quickly uh, what the grid layout with easy posts is capable of. So we'll choose uh, the second post emphasis preset, which will ship with 3.7 alpha one. And you can see there's a really interesting layout that really just isn't easy to achieve with the normal flex box layout approach. So here we've got uh, three posts on the left, a big one in the middle where you can read some more of the content, three little posts on the right, and then some slightly bigger posts down here. Let's take a look at another preset. We have one that's called masonry. And this gets us a really cool masonry layout that kind of features the featured images uh, from the posts themselves. So the way we've set this up is made to work really well and really seamlessly with easy posts and repeaters and give you a lot of the power that CSS Grid affords you 
without overwhelming you with all of the CSS Grid controls, because CSS Grid is very extensive and there really is a lot to it. So that's a pretty solid overview of CSS Grid, and there will be a lot more to explore as you start digging into it, but uh, we're excited to finally get CSS Grid into Oxygen because it's really a great complement to Oxygen's already very powerful Flexbox layout engine. Now the next thing I want to talk about is the Composite Elements Library. This is a collection of elements that are built from basic Oxygen building blocks that are either convenience items or include some kind of advanced functionality. So one example is our little horizontal divider we have here under our CSS grid heading. That's a composite element. We can insert that with one click. So let's just re-add it real quick here. So we'll click Add. And in the Add pane, you'll notice some new items with the Oxygen logo at the top left. Those are composite elements. So let's search for Horizontal Divider and drop that in. Now the horizontal divider is just a div with a line on the left, an icon in the middle, and another line on the right. But it's much easier to click one button and drop that thing in than it is to build it from scratch by yourself. So this would be more of a convenience item. The beauty of the way composite elements work is these are composed of individual oxygen elements. So if you wanna change the icon, you click the icon and change it to whatever you want. You wanna style the lines differently? Well, just click them, go to Advanced Background, and change their background color. Now you have a red line. So in that way, these composite elements represent not only convenience, but also they embody the oxygen philosophy of extreme flexibility. But it's not just convenience items that we've put in. So let's get rid of this Easy Post element and let's add another composite element. We have things like Icon buttons, which again is more of a convenience item because most folks can build this uh, with relative ease, but it is very convenient to drop it in in one click. Uh, we have things like icon lists, which again are collections of elements. And since that's on a darker background, we'll give it a white background and you can see what it looks like. Perfect. But we want to look at something a little more advanced. So let's drop in a dynamic slider. So the dynamic slider is a repeater that works in conjunction with swiper.js to create a dynamically populated slider. So we just drop that in. Now let's save it and look on the front end. And you're gonna see that in one click, we created a dynamic slider that shows us all of our posts. And if we want to alter that element or change the query, we just go into dynamic slider, slider container, find the repeater, and modify it like we do any other repeater. Let's take a look at another composite element here. Let's click Add, and we'll go through and look for all those new elements with the little oxygen icons on them. Some of these are elements that just use a bit more advanced CSS. Uh, actually, we need to get rid of that entire element here, that dynamic slider, it's gone. Now let's add in our hover scrolling image. So this is just an element that's great for displaying images that have a lot of vertical size. So you can hover over it and it scrolls down slowly to show you uh, the whole image. We have things like, let's add one called uh, flip box, drop that in. And the flip box has a front and a back side, both of which are visible in the builder, but if we go up to the front end, you'll see the actual effect of the flip box. You hover over it and it flips around with kind of a 3D effect. We also have elements like mega menus and automatic table of contents. Let's show that real quick. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to drop a few headings onto here. Let's do heading one. It's actually gonna be an H2. Uh, and then we'll duplicate that and then we'll add some more headings under those uh, to kind of build a typical hierarchy. And then do one here too. And make sure that's an H3. So the table of contents element uses the H1 through H6 hierarchy to actually build a table of contents. So let's drop that in. And let's drag it up to the top here and give it a white background. Okay, so now you can see here in the builder that we have some placeholder items. 
The way this works is you can style any of these items any way you want, and then those styles are used on the front end when these elements are dynamically cloned to create the actual table of contents hierarchy. So let's look on the front end with the default styles. And you can see that we now have heading one, subheading, heading two, subheading two. And if you click these on a longer page, it would scroll you to the appropriate heading. Now let's go back and change the style on this primary. So all of the items that indicate an H2 will use these styles. Let's just change the uh, background color to something a little bit different. Let's change it to this light purple and then change the typography color to white. Now, if we jump on the front end and refresh, you'll see that all of our H1 items now use that styling. And that functionality is added via code blocks. So here's another beautiful part of this. You can go into the code block that comes with this composite element and see all of the JavaScript that's used to make it work. So for advanced users, this gives you kind of a starting point, and then you can build off of the functionality and write your own additional code or change the code around if you want. Now note that the composite elements library is available to everyone in the alpha, but when we get to Oxygen 3.7 RC1, it's only going to be available to users who had an agency license or equivalent before the release of the release candidate. And we'll reveal more details about how this library will become available later on. But for now, we encourage everyone to download the alpha and play around with these elements and let us know if you'd like to see any additional elements added because we already have several in the works and we'll be expanding this library over time. Or if you find any issues or have any tweaks you'd like to request, let us know because the technology behind the way these elements are added to Oxygen allows us to make tweaks and changes on the fly independent of our actual release cycle. So if someone finds an issue with something, we can make changes really quickly and not have to wait for a whole Oxygen release to update one element. So Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's what's new in Oxygen 3.7 Alpha 1. Thank you for watching.